The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Schroeders is a global asset and wealth manager with broad expertise across public and private markets, investing on behalf of individuals, institutions and advisors. We support advisors to help their clients build successful portfolios to achieve their goals, whatever they may be. We are proud to be partnering with Ensemble to host a dedicated investment space on the Ensemble platform to have more meaningful conversations with their clients and to give advisors a more efficient way to engage with Schroeders. Join the Schroeders investment space on the Ensemble platform today. Uh, hello, welcome back to another episode. I'm James Wrigley, and today I've got the pleasure of talking to Celia Polkinghorn, uh, Bonsai Digital Marketing. Celia, I said to you off, uh, off, uh, offline, or whatever you want to say, before we started recording. That I see your face popping up on TikTok all the time, so I wanted to get you on and have a chat. But uh, thanks, thanks for joining me. Oh, I'm so pleased to be here. It's a total pleasure. Thanks for asking me. So, Bonsai Digital Marketing, which is actually it would have been a, a good soundbite to grab the the history of. Of, of your business and how you uh, how you got into what you're doing but maybe maybe let's start about what is your business who you tend to be working with how that how that evolved yeah I think the most important thing to get across about bonsai is the positioning my positioning in the market right so I think when you're a, just a regular business owner out there in the world you know you don't specialize in marketing you don't have a particularly strong understanding of marketing typically you think, when you think, you know, outsource marketing service, you think marketing agency, right? And the marketing agency does like graphic design and branding work and website work and maybe, you know, running some Facebook ads or something like that, paid advertising. Um, or you might think of something like an online content agency or a LinkedIn lead generation agency, something like that. But um, no one really thinks of my type of business because it's not an obvious type of business to understand, right? But the important part about my business is I help people build their organic marketing foundations, right? So it's the it's the organic marketing foundation that you have to have in place before you ever use like an agency service, essentially. So it's not that you don't use agencies, of course you can, but there's certain things that you've got to have in place um, in your in your business before agency work will really generate really good results for you, and that's what I help people build. So organic just means without using paid advertising. Um, and just doing things, you know, just as you do, James, on TikTok organically, you know, yep. you just get on and you talk and you be yourself and you build up your personal brand and just generate an understanding in the world of who you are first so that when we, you know, pay for traffic, we pay to send traffic to your online presence, there's actually something for people there when when they get there because it's not the ad that makes money for you. It's what happens on the other end of the ad that makes money for you, right? And that's up to the business owner at the end of the day. So that's what I help people with. Gotcha. Right. And and so the the history of it. So you, you work you were saying as we were saying before uh impressed to record that uh you you work with a lot of financial advisors and others in kind of service based businesses. How how did that come about? How did that evolve? Yeah, so it's a bit of a story, but um <laughs> I I was actually living in Japan for ten years. So two years ago during COVID I finally was able to get a flight back to Australia but but prior to that, I'd been living in Japan for 10 years and um, I'd been working as a, you know, a content creator, a copywriter, an editor, um, you know, a freelance writer, a curriculum writer, just all sorts of copywriting um, jobs and, you know, essentially just using the written word to get an outcome, which is what marketing is, right? And leading up to coming back to Australia, I knew I was coming back to Australia, you know, within the next one, two or three years before I came back. And I was sort of wondering um, about the job search, right? And I, you know, was going to be pr- probably a bit of a, a jump or a bit of a gap, you know, before I got a job. So I thought, I know I'll start a business to, to carry me over in case it's difficult or something for me for the first few months to get a job. So at least I'll have some, you know, I'll have some income coming in, right? And I decided to start a marketing service, a done-for-you marketing service, which at the time was a LinkedIn lead generation service. 
And as part of starting that service, I wanted to just um, try the methods that I'd been creating on a service business, you know, for free, right? Just to make sure that it works. Um, but I realized I didn't actually really know very many at that time. I didn't know very many um, directors or owners of service-based businesses. And I wasn't quite sure who to ask, which sounds so funny now because I feel like everyone I talk to now is a service-based business owner. I don't think I talk to anyone who isn't, but at that time I really didn't know. So I asked my family's financial advisor. Um, I said, hey, <laughs> you know, can I borrow your LinkedIn account, essentially? I'll try and yeah. make you some money. <laughs> and, um, he's, he, you know, luckily he's quite a forward-thinking person and he's like, yeah, sure, you know, didn't mind taking the risk and, you know, trusted me because he knew that I, you know, was a strong writer and, and he knew I'd look after his his um, connections. So he did let me do it and um, four days into the process, we actually were able to land him a 20K per year client recurring. So I was like, okay, this is actually working, you know, it's working really, really well. And so, of course, you know, after that, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, it's working for financial advisors. I think it would work for others, but I, I just want to, you know, I want to stay focused on financial advisors and not reinvent the wheel since it's it's going well. And then just naturally what happened after that is my financial advisor clients would ask me, can you do this for our clients? Can you help our clients be more profitable? So that's when it sort of branched out into not just financial advisors, but also any any anyone in an advisory consulting or coaching role. Yeah, right. Yes. Wait, so how long ago was that that you were doing the LinkedIn lead? So, yeah, the business was started three and a half years ago. So it was October 2019. So I spent that first year of the business doing done-for-you services. Um, yep. And, you know, the done-for-you services, they have a – they have only a degree of success, right? They have a degree of success and the degree of success depends wildly on the business owner and the situation that the business is in. Um, and so that's ultimately why I evolved the service into a done with you service, not a done for you service, because when you have a done for you service, you're sort of at the mercy of, um, you know, advisors, sales systems, delivery systems, um, their own sort of like mindset around their own marketing you know you're at the mercy of so many different elements and therefore the the success varies wildly you know um i was very very lucky with the first person that i did it with he happened to really have his acts together right so um that's why we were able to generate quite a lot of profit but not everybody is that has their ducks in or in such a row, right? Um, as I discovered the hard way, as I continued to serve people, try to serve people in the same capacity. So that's when I developed it into a done with you service where actually what I do is I incorporate, I bring in the business owner and show them exactly what they need to understand to get their marketing working. So it's just that sort of situation of instead of trying to catch a fish for the man, you teach the man to fish and, you know, he can feed his village for a lifetime. It's that sort of mentality. Yeah, gotcha. Can, can you explain what you mean by a, a done for you service? Like, what does that actually yeah, mean? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, do please do call me out every time I use a marketing jug because um, <laughs> it's that unconscious bias, isn't it? That unconscious confidence. So, done for you is you know, um, yeah. as a as a financial advisor, say potentially uh, at some point throughout your business, you might have thought. Um, let's hire an agency to do something for us. Um, let's hire an agency to run our Facebook ads or let's hire an agency to create content for us or let's hire an agency to book meetings for us, right? That's an example of a done-for-you service. Um, a, an outside service comes in and they take over an aspect of your marketing and they just do it for you without very all that without all that much input from you. There might be some input, it depends on the service, but the idea is that um, you just get to outsource it and you don't have to think about it and leads coming to your business, right? It's the dream that everyone wants. Um, but unfortunately, those types of services are limited. And it's like I said before, because you're you're wildly at the mercy of all the different other elements in people's businesses. So when someone has a done with you service, it doesn't mean that um, they don't do anything for you. We definitely still do, for example, like <clears throat> all the copywriting for a business. When we work with them, we don't expect them to do their own copywriting. So, you know, all the copywriting for the LinkedIn profiles, the websites, that kind of thing is done. But what we actually do is teach them how to create content in a way that's going to serve them for the rest of the life of their business. And we okay. also teach them, for example, how to hire an internal marketing coordinator to help them with the mental load of that, to help them with the, it's the copywriting, the, the copywriting 
can be difficult for people if you're not naturally a copywriter, you know, which most people aren't. Yeah. It's, it's really like, because good marketing is very copywriting heavy. Um, but yeah, teaching them to hire an internal marketing coordinator that can take on that mental load, take on the mental load of the strategy and, and who can take and keep everyone accountable for doing the right thing. Like James, please post, you know, once a day on TikTok sort of thing, you know, um, and just help with ideas generation and just, you know, eventually, ultimately, they're going to be executing a cross-platform marketing strategy um, for the business. So, it's just helping the business instead of helping the business with a Band-Aid solution, which is generally what a done-for-you solution is, especially at the small and medium-sized business level. Things really change at the big business level. But the small and medium-sized business level, it's just a Band-Aid solution, whereas what we want is we want the solution that's going to serve you for the life of your business, right? You know, it's the same as financial advisors. So instead of a Band-Aid solution of like, let's pick some stocks and see how they go, it's like, no, we want to look at your whole situation or we want to create something for you where you can reverse engineer, you know, however many dollars you want when you when you retire and the time that you retire and all that kind of thing. We want something that's really actually going to move the needle for you long term. Yep. Gotcha. And so what is your experience with, with financial advisors when you talk about marketing? Is Is that a receptive conversation or is it? And maybe you're dealing with people that are actually looking to do something in the marketing space anyway. But I would have thought that by and large, financial advisors would shy away from this idea of marketing. Would that? Yeah. What What's your experience? I've experienced everything from from each end of the scale. You know, I've, I've experienced talking to people who you know they're really gung ho and really excited about it, and they know that there's potential. They've just got no idea how to go about navigating it, which is totally, of course, understandable. Um, and then there's the other end of the scale where people have come to me and they said, listen, I know I need to market my service, but I really don't want to show up on camera. I don't want to do personal branding. I, you know, basically hate the idea of marketing, but I just know I have to do it. You know, so I've had all of those conversations and everything in between. And so what do you, so if, if someone that's at that extreme that you just mentioned that they don't want to show up on camera, they don't want to do the personal branding, where does someone like that even start? What? Yeah, it's. It's always it's always a really um, very very fascinating and also honest <laughs> conversation that I end up having with those people because this this could turn into a long answer and I'll try and keep it brief. But yeah, the thing about marketing, right? All it is at the end of the day is it is exactly the same as talking to your clients. It's exactly the same as what you do with your clients. You're just bringing it forward and. You just there just happens to be like a video camera recording you, you know, or like it just happens to be you writing something on on LinkedIn. And so instead of you writing your meeting notes for your for your client after they finished the meeting and your review meeting or whatever, let's just say you're writing a version of the meeting notes on LinkedIn and sharing them, sharing it publicly. Like it's it's really it's just no different. It's no different from what you do every single day. But people because there's that that little tiny element of the camera or the little tiny element of that's going out publicly, people turn it into this whole different thing. <laughs> and it's and and you know, this is what I try and say. I'm like, I, I get it because even myself, like I'm a, you know, like I, I don't like using the label introvert because I don't think people really understand what it means, but I am an introvert. I'm not someone that like wants to be out there and like, you know, la di da. Like uh, I get it. I didn't want to go on camera either when I started my marketing business and for my first year in business I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I could get away with it. And like I could. I could. If I it depends like what results you're happy with in your business. But it's like ultimately you're being a hypocrite silly and you're going to have to do it. I I'm going to have to set an example, right? Um otherwise I'm limiting my capacity to help other people as well. But let's just say a financial advisor is in that situation you know, let's say they are really, really good with their clients behind closed doors. They're really, really good, but there's just this block or limiting belief around showing up on video or, you know, pre posting publicly. In an organic marketing strategy, there's sort of three levers you can pull, right? There's outreach, there's content, and there's referrals. So there are plenty of successful businesses have been built in the world only on the referrals and networking element with no content, with no outreach. But of course, you know, you're, you're, you're shutting off two opportunities for yourself and you're, you're relying on only one. And you also have to work so, so hard on your referrals and networks if you've got no organic marketing presence to send people to, because a lot of those people that you network with will go to your website or your LinkedIn profile or your, you know, YouTube channel or whatever, looking for, is this person actually good at what they do? Looking for evidence, right? 
Um, and a lot of the time they're not going to proceed with you if they can't see anything. I'm certainly that person. If I can't see, if I, if in my head I'm saying, I can't see him, I can't see her, I can't see them. Yep. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're about. I'm not going to proceed with them. So in my view, it's very, very important to also be doing the outreach and the content side of things. Um, but, you know, what I say to people is at least if you can get, at least if you can get things happening every day in writing, if you absolutely can't show up on video, at least you, you will make progress. It's just going to take such a lot more time. You know, if you're willing to show up on video, you'll be making progress in, you know, as little as like four weeks to six months kind of thing. But if you're relying on only writing, um, you can definitely do it. And there are definitely people who have done it. It's just going to take, it's potentially, you just have to expect that it's going to take longer, a year or two or three, and you just have to keep persisting and just keep being okay and happy with that. And if you are, you can you can definitely do it. Yeah. So, so if I'm starting out today and I've decided, okay, I've got my clients, as you said, you know, I, I get the odd referral that comes through. I know a couple of accountants or whatever that send me some work. Yeah. And and business has been okay, but but I I hear of these stories of people using social media and all the rest of it, and and I where where should I start? Where where what should I do first? Yeah, so the very first thing is to just pick a platform. The obvious platform, really, I think, is LinkedIn. If you're a if you're a service based business, you know, obviously, if you're a product based business, e commerce or whatever, the story is going to be different. You know, Instagram, whatever. So if you're a service-based business and that's who I work with, um, it's, it's going to be LinkedIn <laughs> because it's just, it's just it's the no-brainer platform to do it on. Um, and what you just want to do is just start finding ways to show up, look, ideally every day on LinkedIn, but even if you're showing up for the very first time ever, you know, posting once a week is going to feel like a lot for you. Um, so if you just start with that, like just post once a week, and then post twice a week, and then post three times a week, and then get yourself up to posting every day. And what you what you've got to um, make sure you do if you do do that is just make sure you you post in an optimized way. So that what does that mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it means it's very very simple. It's very 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 simple. But nobody does it. <laughs> um, all it means, posting in an optimized way, is making sure the structure of any post, whether it's a written post or a video post, is just hook, story, call to action, or hook, story, call to think. You don't have to call someone to take action to DM every single time. Um, but it's just hook, like so. It's like telling a story, right? As humans, we speak in stories every day. When we come home to our husband or wife at the end of the day and say what happened during the day, we tell a story. When we're talking to our kids about something, we tell a story. Even when we're talking to our dog, we'll tell a story. <laughs> you know, everything's a story. Otherwise, if it wasn't, it wouldn't make sense, right? And everything has a beginning, a middle, and end. It's just that when we are talking out in the world, freestyling, we're not conscious of that. And so then like, when we sit down to write something on LinkedIn, often we're like, oh, how should I write this? And like the big, the big interruption, the big like unfortunate interruption in that process is like the way we've been trained to write academically <laughs> at school and uni is is like anti everything successful in marketing, right? Where it, at, remember at uni doing all your kind of assignments and stuff, you would just you would write these big long airy fairy. You'd find the biggest fluffiest words you possibly could to sound smart and sound academic and try and get a distinction, right? And like, that's how you think people think they, you know, like if I write like that, they'll view me as smart and they'll view me as credible and they'll want to work with me. But the opposite happens, right? That people look at it, they're like, Oof, what does that mean? You know, because when we go on social media, right, we go on social media for distraction. We don't go on social media to get educated, yes. <laughs> right? We don't. So, like, when we see that, we're like, oh, no idea what that means. Or like, oh, my God, that person sounds so, like, up themselves because they're so long-winded in using these big, like, fluffy words. So, the big the big rule in copywriting, right, is write for a 12-year-old. That's the big number one rule. Write for a 12-year-old, write simply, one-sentence paragraphs one sentence paragraphs it's everything you didn't learn in uni right one sentence paragraphs lots of white space speak simply speak to the point you know don't try and sound smart like just try and help right just try and help so it's just a simple hook line to catch people's attention provide the value you want to provide in a succinct way and then end with a line you know asking people to engage with the post or to reach out if you want them to reach out or whatever you want them to do. 
yeah. after the post. Yeah. Just remember to ask them to do something. If you just did that every single day on on LinkedIn, you'd have you'd have a a basic organic marketing strategy in place, and you could build from there. It's interesting you you, you mentioned about the uh, the long words and and the and these posts. There's there's a particular person not in financial advice circles, but I happen to be connected to on on LinkedIn, and every now and then this person posts, and and I read them to just try and understand what is this guy even saying because it's like, yeah. <laughs> just got a period of block of text and he's talking about all of this stuff that I have no idea what he's actually saying and there's all of these <laughs> words in there to just try and sound like he's the smartest guy on the planet. But then there's these people underneath going, yeah, that's amazing. I agree with you. I'm like, but what did he even say? I got no idea. And but that's the thing. You're saying that's counter to you know, he's trying to sound like the smartest guy in the room, but <laughs> that's completely counter to marketing activities. That's right. And and this is where marketing is just such a gaslighting chamber. You know, this is where marketing can get really gaslighting because like you could you could see a guy like that. You could see him writing in this long winded way and you can see all these people like sixty people have liked it and a whole bunch of people are commenting on the post, right? And you think, oh, that must be good marketing. That must be the way. But the problem is this is where context comes into play, right? So those sixty people that might have liked on his on his post, they might be all his employees. Yeah. Or they might be like industry peers, you know, that they're people that aren't going to buy from him, yeah. you know, they're people that that are sucking up to him for some reason or, or you know, just genuinely appreciate him for some reason, but they're not buyers, yeah. you know, so you, you look at it and you think, oh, good, that's getting lots of engagement, that must be the right thing, but it's like, no, but that's not the type of engagement that you want and like I often, like I tell my clients all the time, my posts actually don't get all that much engagement. Um, because the style of post that I often post in is problem aware. I post in what I call a problem aware style. So yeah. I'm often making people aware of what their problems are and people don't um, always like that, you know, and they don't want to like the post because it's like, oh, I don't want to like the post because then that's going to look like I have the problem. But then, you know, two two days later I'll have two DMs in my <laughs> my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, you know, account. And it's like, yeah, well, that is it's speaking to people. It's not what people enjoy reading sometimes, or it's not necessarily what they want to hear, but it is what they need to hear. Um, and, you know, because someone has actually come out and just said said how it is, that that it's caused them to reach out because they know, well, that person really understands the problem because they've actually come out and said it and they probably understand the solution too, right? So, so, so let's tackle video, the big scary video. So I, I do a few videos and people hear that I talk to and others, they're like, oh, my voice, my face, I, I don't, I know, I'm not a good looking person, whatever. Where do you start with video? Where do people start with video? Yeah. So there's a few things to sort of keep in mind, isn't there? I guess I was lucky in the sense that um, – like I'm a trained, I'm a trained journalist. I worked for the ABC. That was my first job. I worked for um, the Country Hour for for the ABC, um, and so I had all of you know all day, every day. I was listening to my own voice, and when I was initially doing that, obviously I I had the same thing. I was like, oh my god, my voice does not sound like that. What is going on? What's wrong with these microphones? You know, but what you learn is like actually the way you sound inside your head sounds different to the way you sound on the outside, and um, at first it's really jarring. You're like, what? Like, oh my gosh, I hate the way I sound, right? But then what happens is as you just 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 push through that discomfort, push through, push through, push through, what happens is it comes into a I don't know what the word is, but it comes into like an equilibrium where the way you sound when you hear yourself on video or on audio then is the same as the way you hear yourself in your head. So that doesn't last forever and you get over that. Um, and the other thing is like, oh, I'm not good looking or whatever. It really doesn't matter. It really does not matter at all because like, you know, at the end of the day, your clients love you, right? And your clients know what you look like and they're not, not working with you because of what you look like, right? They're working with you because of what you know. They're working with you because of your systems. They're working with you because of how you can help, you know, and how you can help people get the outcome or transformation that they're looking for. So if someone did want to start on video, I definitely, definitely agree with the way you started if if that's the way you started um on TikTok I'm not sure if you were doing videos before that but I definitely um definitely advocate starting on TikTok and the big reason for that is well the first reason has been this is sort of diminishing a little bit now but it has been that 
you know, previously the organic reach on TikTok has just been so good. You could post a really terrible video and they'll still send it out to 500 people, you know. Um, that's sort of diminishing a little bit now, but the, the effect is still there. So, like, it's a really great um, testing ground for, like, okay, what's actually speaking, what's speaking to people here? Like, what are, are people liking? What are people viewing? Um, what do people seem to need help with? Um, and it's just like got this really easy mechanism for people to comment and you can use like, you know, videos to reply to their comments and that kind of thing. So you can get really quick feedback from your, you know, ideal audience on TikTok. So that was the first reason. The second reason is the TikTok video creator makes life so easy. Like it makes it so easy to create like punchy, watchable videos, just the, the way the record button works. Yeah, you know, James, like obviously like you, it's very easy to just sort of record one sentence at a time um, and it's like, you know, comes out as like quite a punchy video that's very, very watchable, um, which, you know, if you tried to create that on your own using like recording on your own and using a video editor, it'd take forever. You'd never do it. Yeah. But you can just record and get things out so quickly on TikTok and it doesn't take your entire day, you know. You can spend one hour shooting seven videos every week and then just post one a day like save it in the drafts folder and just post one a day and you're showing up every day on tiktok it's pretty easy it's pretty pretty easy really using tiktok to, to at least be showing up once a day on one platform so that's how i would get started what what about the the technology that i need for recording the video like do, do, do you offer much assistance to your clients about do you need the lights do you need the microphone do you need the this do you like you know, in my experience people worry about everything being yeah. perfect, getting in the way of actually just doing something. That's so right. You're so right. Can you share any anything on that? Yeah, 100%. Um, basically, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. The only thing that I – I actually have a like a, um, a video checklist that I, I, I can give it to you, you know, to send to people if you want. Um, it's very, very straightforward, just like of, you know, six or seven things to make sure of every time you're shooting, but none of them require – you know, crazy extra technology. You just need to use your phone. And like the only, the thing I use, I'm just looking for, I can't see it here, but it's just a really, really simple plug-in lapel mic, like $50 thing, you know. Um, and the other thing, to, so like once you've got the audio sorted, which is the most important, believe it or not, more important than vision because it's very hard to listen to bad audio. Um, once you've got a little lapel mic to sort your audio or if your phone ha does happen to have a really good microphone, then great. Um, the only other thing to take into consideration really is to just make sure you're nicely lit, you know, so you're not sitting in a dark room or, you know, you don't have shadows over your face or, you know, you don't have like, you know, your dirty laundry behind you or whatever, like just as long as you're you know, outside is great, as long as it's not too sunny and casting shadows everywhere, outside is fantastic, um, beautiful natural light or otherwise just in, in your house, like standing in front of a window. You honestly, you don't need any ring lights you don't need any fancy cameras you don't need fancy microphones you don't need anything fancy you honestly don't as long as you've got that lapel mic and a window with natural light coming onto your face you that's it that's all you need and you, you commented before about you know we as financial advisors we do our meetings and then we do our file notes afterwards and we're kind of typing that up you you could go a step to creating a version of that as a written post for linkedin you could create a version of that as a video too. Exactly. So yeah. I really encourage people once they get out of any meeting, like whether it's a, a strategy session, a discovery call, an annual review meeting, whatever it is, an emergency phone call because the client's ran, rang in a panic, whatever it is, after you get off that call with someone, just use the, I don't know if you, you probably are familiar with the otter.ai app. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a voice to text app. So, like, I really encourage all my clients, every time you get off a phone call with a client it doesn't, or a prospect or whoever, it doesn't matter what you were talking about. Just get onto Otter, press the record button, and just give a summary. Just say a summary. Okay, I was talking to Dave today. He had this concern about X, Y, and Z. Um, what we did to solve that was X, Y, and Z, right? And that will immediately translate your voice to text. And you will have that there as a sort of like draft post, essentially. Yeah, right. And like what you, yeah, what you can do is just like take that text, put it in the LinkedIn, you know, in the LinkedIn post creator, edit it so it's it's written for a twelve year old and it's hook story call to action, right? Post it, and then you get your TikTok video creator up, 
and you can literally read, if you've written it properly, you can read it sentence for sentence into the in the TikTok creator and press post and there you've got a TikTok post. You never have to sit there with a blank page creating content ever. You just document what happens during during your day. What what about it so at the end of this, can you talk of talk about maybe some some success that clients are having with with their organic marketing? Can you yeah. can you talk through anything like that? Hundred percent. Yeah. So if, um yeah, I've been lucky to work with a lot of like, you know, real real go getters. Uh, you can see them on my website, the ones that really do take the strategy and run with it. I I try and do a video case study with them so that you can see. Um, you can get a sense of like how things were before we started working together, what we did together and how things are now that things, you know, that they've sort of got the strategy in place and they've run with it. So um, you know, a really awesome kind of young New Zealand financial advisor I worked with, he was able to like literally, we, we just put the organic strategy in place, finished, done, done like a dinner. And it, within that year um, after that, he was he doubled his whole workforce and they had to look for a whole new bigger office, right? So like he really, really understood it and really he's a high quick start and he just took it and ran with it and just, just wow, just really, really excelled. Um, you know, there's another firm that I've been working with um, who's leading up to listing on the stock exchange, which is really exciting. Like they've been able to, you know, like what happens is um, a, a lead generation problem turns into a hiring problem. <laughs> That's what happens, right? So all of a sudden it's like, oh, Celia, um, could you actually help us to write more attractive job ads? <laughs> <laughs> so that we can start attracting the right people, right? And that's what we want to happen because at the end of the day, when you're doing marketing properly, it's especially at the small and medium-sized business level, I have to stress I'm talking about small and medium-sized businesses here, not you know Nike or whatever, not big businesses. At the small and medium-sized business level with an organic marketing strategy, if you do you know just the, the few fundamentals properly, um, it is so easy to oversubscribe yourself. It's so easy to oversubscribe yourself with leads and really what you're just trying to do is like what what turned what thought you thought was a marketing problem is now actually sort of like a sales and delivery systems problem and a hiring problem you know the marketing problem if you do marketing just those fundamentals right the marketing problem doesn't last for very long it's it then turns into sales systems and business systems you know and that's you know ultimately a lot of the time what I end up working with people on as well because the success of the sales systems and the business systems does then feed back into the success of the marketing too. Yeah. So it like all works together organically in a holistic system. But yeah, like typically, you know, like for example, like a personal branding photographer I worked with recently, she really wanted to start doing retreats, but she's like, I don't know how to fill these retreats. You know, um, I've been paying for ads, um, hasn't really been working kind of thing. And it's like, all right, well, let's put an organic system in place where you can actually reach out to people who you know are really going to benefit from this retreat and you can fill all those spots organically. So like it really, whatever whatever target you want to reverse engineer, you know, within reason, it's totally possible. But what you just have to make sure that you do is understand what activity and what volume of activity you need to do in order to achieve that that reverse engineer target that you want. Got it. Yeah. yeah. It's all exciting. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So. <laughs> Thanks for thanks for joining me today, Celia. Where where can people find you if anyone's interested? Where you know yeah. the website? Where can people find you? Yeah, so you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Just type in Celia Polkinghorn onto LinkedIn. Um, probably you won't be able to spell my last name, so <laughs> go to the website, which is bonsai digital marketing Um, and if you're on TikTok, my username is Celia Polkinghorn as well. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. I've even picked up a few tips there too. So. Thanks for joining and hopefully there's some value for anyone that, uh, that's listening along. Thanks so much for your questions. They were great. Thanks. See you. This material does not contain and should not be relied on for financial, accounting, legal or tax advice. Schroeder's does not give any warranty as to the accuracy, reliability or completeness of information presented. Visit www.schroeders.com.au forward slash advisors for more information about our funds.